Hello, hello. So I am back and I have my little face up in the corner so you guys can still see me. We're going to go through Daniel 11. Now with this version of the video, I only have 15 minutes, so we're going to go through this quickly, which means that I'm going to do a separate video after this and I will do a live stream about Prince Lawful versus King Lawless because we're going to be introduced to King Lawless here. I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time right yet talking about this, but let us go through this. Hopefully you guys have had an opportunity to see the document that I have up here in front of me. If you have not, it is on academia.edu uh, in the links below. And I put this out there specifically because the book of Daniel can be confusing. We're going to start up here and I'm just going to very briefly preview this because I have another video about this where I introduced you to what this is. But this is from Daniel 2. This is the statue parts, and uh, they re represent the four kingdoms, which are also what Daniel 7's night visions talk about with the four beasts. There are two animals in Daniel 8, which are tied, color-coded, this is all color-coded, tied to the second and third kingdoms. Uh, the third kingdom, Greece, had a horn, the goat had a horn, that was Alexander the Great. It was broken, and four horns came up in the place of it. That was four further kings that would come out of the same empire. And attached to those four horns was another little horn, Antiochus Epiphanes, who in Daniel 8 we learned is a foreshadow of the fourth beast, who's also a little horn, but he comes up among the ten horns, as discussed in Daniel 7. All of this is here. So th there's a difference between the two. The little horn is attached to the four horns in Daniel 8, which is Antiochus Epiphanes, related specifically to the Greek Empire. Related to the fourth beast, he's a little horn that come up, comes up among the ten, and he's also going to commit an abomination of desolation. This is where we come over to Daniel 11. So hopefully you can see this, but... As we go through Daniel 11, you're going to see the transition from Medo-Persia to Greece and eventually to the fourth beast. And it is not coincidental that we find the transition amidst the abomination of desolation. Specifically what Antiochus foreshadowed via the same type of act in Daniel 8. We will find the same thing of the fourth beast from Daniel 9, in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice, the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. We find that specific reference made also in Daniel 11 to tell you what the abomination of desolation is going to look like. So we're going to see in this chapter a transition from second kingdom slash second beast to third kingdom slash third beast to fourth kingdom slash fourth beast. And as we find in the book of Revelation, that fourth beast is tied to, like we know specifically when that's going to happen, language, I'm previewing here, language here from Daniel 7, verse 1, in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream of visions of his head upon his bed. And he wrote the dream, told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven strove upon the great sea. Four beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. You take that into the book of Revelation, chapter 13, and you see the fourth beast coming out of the sea. I stood upon the sand of the sea, saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, seven crowns upon his head. So that is where you find the fourth beast introduced, is the midpoint of the 70th week. The abomination of desolation is the revelation of the man of sin. We know this already from 2 Thessalonians 2, the revelation of the man of sin, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That is the abomination of desolation, which Daniel 9.27 says will happen in the midst of the week. So just keep that in the back of your minds, because as we're going through this, and I am not going to spend a great deal of, of time on this history, there are reference points, reference materials available to tell you, go to gotquestions.org, one of those similar things, to tell you what the historical references are. The reason I'm not going to link anything specifically below is because when they get to Daniel 11.36, 36, 
what is tied to the fourth beast, which is yet yeah, future in Revelation in the 70th week, that is where they get off course. And frankly, I don't want my name tied to giving out materials that will tell you it's something other than what it actually is per the Bible. So if you want to do that study on your own, go for it. I have a very, very brief description of what these are. Let us start reading, because like I said, I've only got about 10 more minutes before this video runs out of time. Day 11, 1. Also, I, in the first year of Darius the Mede, even I stood to confirm to strengthen him. Now I will show thee the truth. Here we go. We're right here. Daniel 11. And now I will show thee the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia. The fourth shall be far richer than they all. This is talking about Cyrus the Great, who was king at that time. Because remember, Medes and Persians. Darius the Mede, Cyrus the Great was the Persian. So Cyrus the Great was the first, then Cambyses the second, then Darius the Great, who is different from this Darius. Xerxes the first. Xerxes, who was the, the father of Artaxerxes, <laughs> who was in the 20th year of his reign when he gave the command to go forth uh, and rebuild the city <laughs> to Nehemiah and Nehemiah 2 to start the countdown on the 70 weeks of years. So that's what's being talked about here. The fourth shall be far richer than they all, and by his strength through his riches he shall stir up against uh, all against the realm of Grisha. And this is where uh, he started, this was the decline of the Persian Empire during Xerxes I, and eventually they weakened to the point where Alexander the Great took them over. A mighty king shall stand up, that's Alexander the Great, right here of Grisha, this is the transition between the second and third empires, the second and third beasts, moving from Xerxes I to Alexander the Great of Greece. A mighty king shall stand up, shall rule with great dominion, and do according to his will. Now remember, remember that in Daniel 7, we were told in the night visions that these four beasts rise up out of the sea, they're diverse from one another, but there are three that come before the first, or come before the fourth, and they are all similar. We also learned this in part from Revelation 17, and, and I don't want to get too far off topic, but when it talks about their seven heads, so the beast is like the seven, but he is the eighth. He's of the seven. Five had come. One was, there was another that would come that would continue a short space. And then there was this guy who would be the eighth. It's Revelation 17, talking about the seven heads and the ten horns and what those seven heads represent. Seven rulers. Five had come. One was. One would come, would con continue a short space. And then this guy, he was the eighth of the seven. When it says that Alexander the Great, he's one of those heads, one of those seven heads. He's one of those rulers. He's one of the like-minded. This fourth beast is, is of the seven, per Revelation 17. Hopefully I'm not confusing you with this. All you have to do is go to that chapter and check it out. It says he's going to do according to his will, Alexander the Great. You're going to learn this about the fourth beast as well, the, the uh, one who commits the abomination of desolation in the midst of the 70th week, the king shall do according to his will. So these guys are all similar. There's all patterns, but there's going to arise a final one who will be infinitely worse than all of the others. But you're building the case to see that they're all bad. In fact, we learn from Daniel 8 that the evilness of the last will put the other three beasts who came before to shame. That does not mean they were not evil. Just that the last one is so evil that he puts the evilness of the others to shame. Continuing on against uh, about Alexander the Great, verse 4. When he shall stand up, his kingdom shall be broken, shall be divided toward the four winds of heaven. This is where we encounter the same thing from chapter 8. He's the, the great horn uh, of the goat. That horn's broken and four kingdoms come out of the nation, one of which is Antiochus. So... We, all of this imagery ties together. When he shall stand up, his kingdom shall be broken, shall be divided toward the four winds of heaven and not to his posterity, nor according to his dominion, which he ruled for his kingdom shall be plucked up, even for the others besides those. The king of the south shall be strong. That's Egypt right here. 
One of his princes, he shall be strong above him, shall have dominion, and his dominion shall be a great dominion. So the king of the south is a reference to Egypt and the Ptolemaic Empire. In the end of years, they shall join themselves together, for the king's daughter of the south shall come to the king of the north to make an agreement. The king of the north is the Greeks in Syria. Again, there's historical reference point to tell you what all of these are. I'm just going to give you a very, very brief overview. The king of the north is the Greeks in Syria. The king of the south is the Ptolemaic Empire in Egypt. So, from Daniel 11, 5 through 20, you're talking about things that are happening during the intertestamental period. That is the 400 years, not, not the totality of the 400 years, because the Roman Empire would uh, come after the Greeks. Rome is not in here at all. I'm just saying that from verse 5 through Daniel 11, uh, Daniel 11, 5 through 20, you're talking about things that are happening in the intertestamental period, which, which is the 400 years between the Old and New Testaments, after Malachi, before Matthew. In the end of the years, they shall join themselves together, for the king's daughter of the south shall come to the king of the north to make an agreement, but she shall not retain the power of the arm, neither shall he stand nor his arm, but she shall be given up, and they that brought her, and he that begat her, and he that strengthened her in these times. Out of a branch of her roots, one shall stand up in his estate, which shall come with an army, and shall enter into the fortress of the king of the north, shall deal against them, and shall prevail. To be honest, I'm not going to spend more time reading these verses because I don't know the specific historical references because I haven't studied the specific historical references like what these battles were specifically named. What I am going to tell you is Daniel 11, 5 through 20 is taking place in the space between Malachi and Matthew. It is historical reference. Where we pick up with Antiochus Epiphanes, who was the foreshadow of the fourth beast, Antiochus being the little horn that arises out of the four horns of the Greek Empire, represented by the four heads of the leopard in the night visions in Daniel 7. We pick up with him in Daniel eleven twenty-one 21 through 35. In his estate shall stand up a vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom. He shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. With the arm of a flood shall they be overthrown from before him and shall be broken, yea, also the prince of the covenant. And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully, for he shall come up and shall be strong with a small people. He shall enter peaceably even upon the fattest of places of the province. He shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. He shall scatter among them the prey shall sp and uh, spoil and riches. Yea, he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds even for a time. He shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south with a great army. The king of the south shall be stirred up to battle with a great and mighty army, but he shall not stand, for they shall forecast devices against him. Yea, they that feed of the portion of his meat shall destroy him, and his army shall overflow, and many shall fall down slain. And both these, heart, these king's hearts shall be to do mischief, and they shall speak lies at one table, but it shall not prosper. For yet the end shall be at the time appointed. Then shall he return into the land with great riches. His heart shall be against the holy covenant. He shall do exploits and return to his own land. And at the time appointed, he shall return and come toward the south, but it shall not be as the former or the latter. For the, the ships of Chittim shall come against him, therefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the holy covenant. So shall he do, he shall even return and have intelligence with them that, uh, with them that forsake the covenant. Arms shall stand on his part, he shall pollute the sanctuary of strength. This is the polluting of the sacrifices for the 12, 2,300 sacrifices, 1,150 evenings and mornings from Daniel 8. Same thing, this is Antiochus Epiphanes. Shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, shall take away the daily sacrifice, they shall place the abomination that make it desolate. Shall do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt by flatteries, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Maccabees. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many, yet they shall fall by the sword, and by flame, by captivity, and by spoil many days. Now when they shall fall, they shall be hoping with little help, but many shall cleave to them with flatteries. And some of them that under, of understandings shall fall, 
try them, purge, make them white, even to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed.